this matchup, but definitely a reason for that type of team building. Heißt and natürlich nichts, aber aus Genuss. Fast and the slow mode. I'm interested to see which one he's going for. Iron Hands of Frigiraf on the field. This normally smells like Trick Room to me, whereas on Victor Medina's side, it is that Raging Bolt and Landorus. Okay, Na, hard Trick Room also. At this point, too, you can't be pressing over on the other end of the field here. The Raging Bolt, this is going to be the room. Calm Mind leftover da set that rund. you can be going for a Was Calm Mind and setting up for. So if we do see a little bit more of a passive turn, we can be looking for that setup. Of course, then you do have to worry about that Raging Bolt. Maybe even just taking some powerful hits from the Iron Hand, since it is a clear amulet. You are building Strong. for offense. Ball, it is something damage. that can do a lot of damage in a Trick Room situation. The Fake Out to stop the like Landorus kick. from firing off an attack. But Aber the Aber up. Mind. Absolutely love this play. Victor Medina capitalizing on the fact that Trotzdem he doesn't stark. really have a way to stop the Trick Room from going up. So instead, going to make sure there's some defensive capabilities in its face by going for that Calm Mind. Trick Room has indeed been launched by Joshua Lawsey, and those turns will start ticking away. If you're Victor Medina, you want to find a way to either get some KOs in this time, but also burn through the Trick Room turn to get that speed advantage no, the, end. the one thing about the Iron Hands, especially for a more offensive set, is it actually has some really nice coverage moves going on forwards. Mm -hmm. And you, with the Raging Bolt staring down the Frigraph on the other end, you don't want something like a Dazzling Gleam to be coming out. That was Comptara Raging, or? Yeah. It's going to be Terrasalization at this point. That is going to be into the Fairy Tide. Falls Close Combat Quickly, from you are still Hansen in Slot Combat. The Frage is King Close, though, close doing doing Combat Psychic. Significant damage oh, stark. Von Victor stark. Yeah, Spectre stalling through these turns, trying to keep Stark that Landorus a little bit safer. The close combat was actually the move of choice in Team Schmeem, ehrlich, Team Schmeem. So no Schmeem. damage from this Iron Hands on this occasion, as the Ferrigoraf... Wenn hier jetzt noch ein Call Mind kommt, dann ist hier Feierabend. ...defensive play by Victor going for that Protect. Now, what is this Raging Bolt going to do? Ja, okay. The Dragon Pulse is the choice. Plus one Boah, special attack fired off in the Ferrigoraf that will bring it down to about third health, so you can get the Citrus 200, Berry 200, recovery 200. there. Yeah, next Dragon Pulse sollte wahrscheinlich reichen. Soll ich auch rausnehmen. Great opportunity for Victor not to be taking any damage on his end of the field there, but you still have to be really, really careful. There's going to be a couple of things that won't really appreciate the swap in given, and the lander is it's such a powerful Pokemon, it feels bad to give it up for free. Exactly, and Landorus is such a threat, you can understand why Joshua was trying to, you know, double into it, remove it from the field. But you also, if you're Joshua, want to make sure that you've got Pokemon on that can deal okay. big damage out. Lost him. So the close combat Boah, coming through nicht, kind of underwhelming, and you are going to get the defense drop here on both defense and special defense for your troubles. That will leave you a little bit more vulnerable to a follow-up from Victor's side. The Psychic comes through, yeah, it's enough okay. to be able to get Wichtig. the knockout though, so Farigaraf getting a KO. So one powerhouse Pokemon is going to be taken care of in this Raging Bolt ah, Dragon Balls. In the oh. again. Nah, that is like the not matter how close. Critical hit will seal the deal. Trading one for one Pokemon over on this turn. This is where things get Jetzt interesting, though, because as the Trick Room trainer, you can now bring in one of your sweepers. And Blood Moon Ursa Luna is fantastic at this. However, it is a special Aber attack, jetzt kommt and that Karma on the side on Raging Bolt side no. is going to help Victor out from withstanding these attacks. And with Frigoroff gone as well, Breen in the Incineroar, you do have access to your priority. They will tell Hans fake out mm. once again. So there is something that can be stopped on this turn of Trick Room, and with no capability and no way of setting that back and up, you are in Raging Bolt rein flätzen und den einfach umboxen. You are also at that minus one defense and minus one special defense too. Ich glaub, ich so Iron Hands at any point doesn't really feel ja, the Ogerpon. safest. Ja, we have ja. previously seen Iron Hands go for something like a Volt Switch, but that's not something Joshua has the utility for. Ja, so if you want to get the off the field, it either has to be KO'd oh, or has to be a hard switch. Kann aber tendenziell gefake out werden. You want to use these trick room oh, turns in okay. order to get damage on the board. So if I was Joshua, I would keep Und this plus Iron Hands in play. Try and go for something like a Volt Switch. Okay, it's not something it can ignore. Okay, it's not something it can ignore. Okay, Fake out geht in den Ursa Luna Slot. Killt das auf minus 1? Oh my god! Okay. Dragon Pulse, minus 2. Oh my god! These clutch survivals on both Iron Hands and Incineroar in this turn really bringing up the adrenaline. Boah, kann, soll der Hands hier? Nee, er kann Hands nicht rauswechseln. Where it can try and either finish off the Incineroar or try and get some physical damage onto this opposing Raging Bolt. Incineroar, however, in a very precarious spot. Both of the Pokemon, both of the survivals Oof. here, you will have one more turn to be acting with Stupor. that Pokemon now <laughs> with that survival, which is absolutely clutch here. And you still have a little bit of time to be making use of this Ursa Luna. And you need to make sure you can do it fast. 
You can protect on this turn. You also on Victor's end can just be targeting down that slot. So hopefully you can find that mileage with Ooh. that Iron Hands, but protect from the Raging Bolt as well. Hands I like the Raging Bolt though, staying on the field and preserving it well. So going yeah, for the same, Marco, really same. Nice play. The Wild Charge wasn't indeed targeting down Stack that slot. Protect. So a great call by Victor, just making sure to keep this calm mind boost to <laughs> on the field. The Flare Blitz <laughs> also going to protect. So very null and void turn. Both trainers, you know, playing defensively yeah, yeah, okay, as okay, Trick okay, Room okay. ends. Da ist die Frage, lohnt es sich, die Hands vielleicht aufzusparen? Considering the slower Pokémon over on Lurcy's end of the field here, and the Raging Bolt is still sitting at full health here. Kann nicht Terran. And it still oh. has this plus one special attack and special defense boost, so it is something that could be putting off that pressure. And this point, das we still haven't seen aus. idle Pokémon. Aber hier mit Dragon Pulse auf den Dragon Pulse. Okay, das ist echt schön gut für Joshua. To take care of that last final three HP. I also like the fact that now Trick Room's over. You don't even have to worry about going for a Thunderclap. You can just go for these Dragon Pulses and get some really good damage out on the board. Just making sure to get those KOs. Ursaluna is able to retaliate and yeah, get okay. this is so speedy, this, uh, and this point now, you only did a little bit of damage to that region hat. bolt with that Hyper Voice, considering the Frags, was damage attack and that special attack that we already had here. But finally, this Iron Man is going down. There oh, is another threat in the back. It'll be the Heart Flame Ogre Pawn over for Lorsi, but it will have to match up against aye, 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 aye. the Shifu over on Victor's end. Both trainers down to their last two remaining Pokemon, so there can be aye, no aye, 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 aye. on the field. Ogre Pawn, with the offensive pressure it can give out physically, can be a really good counter to the supposing Raging Bolt. However, this is Shifu being the... Offensive pressure, very, very speedy with the Choice Scarf, can hit hard with those Surging Strikes. It's not something that Joshua wants to take Oof. necessarily on either Pokemon. The Ogre Pond as well, ja, I don't know if it has enough the tank Blatt to be able to get a one-hit KO. Ja well, would be one, it's taking a little bit of damage on Raging Ball, but be able to get the knockout here. Maybe Ursaluna has to invest into that Terrestrialization, even though it's specially defensively boosted up on Raging Bolt's side. It might give it that extra bit of damage to enable Ogre Pond to get the knockout. This feels so bad, especially Schlafen if you're having to use something that could be dealing damage in this situation that's not able to, to then maybe have to go for that follow me instead. So that I get to the Dragy Bolt slot. Of that, hey, Victor, there's a lot of our soul on that end. Terrestrialization coming out now here. Trying to make the most of the damage also coming out of the Terra, normal mal. Blood Moon or Saluna. And if you're the Urshifu on Victor's mm, side, what do you lock into mm, here? Because mm, it must be tempting to go for the close combat into that Ursaluna, but then you're going to be dropping your stats the whole time. You probably want to go for that Surging Strikes, but no offensive moves coming out from Ogre Pond. Instead, the follow me drawing oh, it's come close in combat. that close combat. So, they it doesn't nicht. get the knockout, but now Joshua knows that the opposing Urshifu is going to be vulnerable to extra damage. Aber Ogre Pond still just won't survive that double up. Though Dragon Falls, I mean, Frage ist, killed Blood Moon jetzt hier? Das Raging Bolt. Wenn ich es over. Okay. Kann Blood Moon in Close Combat leben? Ich weiß es nicht. Kann. Ursaluna ist schon bulky. Aber er bekommt doch nochmal Life Up Damage. Boah. Ich glaube auch nicht eigentlich. I mean, we talk about the amount oh. of damage that her Shifu can do for a reason, <laughs> right? So, mm. hey, if we just had the things. craziest Ursaluna out there imaginable, <laughs> then Ursa you know what, I'll leave my words on that one, but... <laughs> but then he would have now Black Moon used, Marcus. Has, there's no shot. You know? We have seen some, you know, clutch one, two HP survivals, but as you can see, it's looking a little bit difficult for also us to go for something Ursa like the Hyper Voice, but to five. be able to hang on after you've taken already a significant amount of damage against something like that. Close combat is just too Lebt high to climb. In. But let's have a look. Close combat comes ah, in, and nobody's surprised. There's me. a knockout. <laughs> I don't have to eat my hat this time around. Not Ursula today. is going to go down, and with that, we're going to take this first air book, yeah, match yeah. here in our round at seven. Stark on Harry Potter. Great match. Great play, too. Even Maybe just taking tech advantage gerechnet? of a... Like, hey, I can't stop the trick room. Mm -hmm. Right away, I'm going to get set up with this raging ball. Oh, we might just go over. In that match. I agree, and I like the way that Lorsi was able to get that Trick Room set up nice and early. Had good Pokemon in the back to be able to sweep through Trick Room, but then also the speedier Ogre Pond maybe for when Trick Room was over. However, I think the one thing that Victor did really well was protect the Pokemon wisely. Going for the Protects on the Landorus and the Ushi, Raging Ball, for Raging example, Ball, are opportune times when Lorsi maybe protecten. doubled up into that slot. Just burned through those Trick Room times, which meant that Lorsi couldn't capitalize on them. And at this point, too, even when... Das Problem ist, er hat nichts, um Urshifu zu killen. 
essentially soaked up a double up into that. Die Frage ist, ob vielleicht minus eins Schallwelle mit Split Damage gekillt hat, aber bin ich auch unsicher. And then you didn't need it to be winning that match. Look at that. Das heißt you live that Incineroar just holding on a sliver of health there. And Chaos that you can't pick up like that. Devastating. Sure, the Iron Hands following that same thing. Ay, ay, ay. But the Iron Hands was dealt with once the trick room had ended. Honestly, I'm just gone. Please this was such an incredible match. So many clutch survivals there. And although Blood Moon Ursa Luna, I believe that was one of our cast prediction choices as well. One, I want to say it was Costa had it on there. It did a good job. The Blood Moon was very powerful into this Raging Bolt, and I was surprised that even with the Calm Mind, it went down. It just wasn't enough to go against that Urshifu. And I think when you think of the Battle of the Urshifus, you can see why this Water Terror Urshifu, or particularly with the Choice Scarf, is so dominant right now. Yeah, so now I'm looking at where there can be adjustments going on into this next one because we got to see already that Victor did a really good job of playing around the trick room. Or he does have two different modes to his team. He does also have an extra mode to his team with this tailwind to just kind of outspeed in that sort of way. It does feel a little bit bad in terms of the fact that maybe you're not wanting to bring the Phrygraph to that. There can be priority, but we got to see Iron Hands to fake out, aber konnte er nicht machen, weil er mit Dragon Pulse in den Slot gegangen ist von Iron Hands, weil er predicted hat, dass sein Ogapon geht, dann wäre Ogapon so oder so gestorben. Priority was unlocked anyways. We got the Fago coming up from Victor, and it was kind of a little bit of a spiral from there. I agree. The Psychic going down into the opposing Landorus was very unfortunate at the beginning of the game. Yes, Varigarath also, was able to go through and try and get that knockout later. But as you said, it kind of was underwhelming despite that. Even if it had gone for something like a helping hand and then Lorsi had called correctly the right target with the Iron Hands, it might have been able to play a little bit more of a role and provide more synergy. But I think if Lorsi wants to go for that Trick Room mode again, obviously you have to bring the Varigarath, but maybe find a way to get one of those sweepers like the Blood Moon Ursaluna onto the field more effectively. It's even a case, too, that even looking at Ursi's team, I feel like it's really easy um, to get caught up in, hey, well, the, t the trick room didn't go right. But there is even just like that protect that made things go yes, awry. Yes, it's uh, so Either viable. We will see the faster option this time around. Leading to this game, too, it it's will be the Tornadus and the Ursaluna side by side. This is definitely a shake-up for the books. Lucy bringing in the Tornadus that isn't known for Trick Room, but instead known for okay. Tailwind. Tornadus or Saluna. Wahrscheinlich jetzt Tailwind or Saluna. Where this is tough, though, with the Urshifu being led over on Victor's end of the field, this threatens into the Ursaluna so much. So basically, you can get the speed on your end, but the damage capability coming out from the Ursaluna and the fact that you have an offensive Terra as opposed to a defensive one makes things a little bit tough. And if you're just having your Ursaluna... But they're also like Kindergarten and Poltergeist and so on. Well, then it's also going to also gonna be a really, really tough situation well, here. So being able play. to see the swap coming zombie. out to potentially soak up a close combat could be a fantastic switch. You have to know when to protect your Pokemon, and this is a ad fantastic adjustment here. The talk coming trick. through, actually, really love to see. There's no combat uh, from Raging Bolt now, but oh, the okay, speed okay, is still going to be in the switch. corner of that opposing um, Urshifu. It wasn't even looking oh. in that close combat that's still with a critical hit. It's huge damage to the Iron Hands, but critically, the Ursuluna is safe in the back. Yeah, that is not the damage sponge that you want at that point. The taunt did stop the Raging Bolt from having that setup, though. It'll also be stopping it from a Protect. So it will be a Pokemon that Victor has to be swapping out if he doesn't want it to be falling into a potentially uh, type of fate going on into this turn. So I don't think it necessarily seems to be too threatened by either of these Pokemon right now. You could just start trying to deal a little bit of damage over onto Lorsi's end. And this is where we've seen Iron Hands be so good in previous formats. It's on the field now. It can go for something like the Fake Out, enable the Tornadoes to be able to try and get some damage out on the board, particularly against the Urshifu that's still has that fighting type. If you want to go for something like the Bleak One Storm, as long as it's able to connect, that will still deal significant damage. Urshifu swapping out. Minus one defense and special defense? Absolutely no thank you. And Cinnaroar coming in instead. This will also have the Fago pressure going in on that next turn. The clear amulet onto the Iron Hands. No stat drop coming out from that Intimidate. Drastalization will be coming out here, though, quite early in this game number two. And that'll be yet again the Raging Bolt. Victor's not messing around here, wanting to make sure the Raging Bolt, even though it cannot go for the Calm Mind, that it has that defensive capability and can still apply pressure on the field. Becoming the Fairy type does give it a lot of nice coverage, particularly against the Iron Hands. The Fake Out going down into that slot means Raging Bolt will not be able to capitalize on its shiny new form. Yeah, it's going to be taking some damage from the Storm. A miss onto the Incineroar this time around. Now, Ictor, 
It's just going to be gaining a little bit of health back. Sure, you didn't necessarily get the boost that you wanted on the Raging Bolt, but you're not really taking the most damage anyways. We still haven't had Tailwind set up, so there could be the chance to just try and go for it now at this point. But at this point, it's like turn three and really not too much has happened. I'd have to start worry about the Thunderclap coming through from Victor's Raging Bolt there into the Tornadus if you want to go for another Obliquin Storm per se. So possibly you're right, the Tailwind could be the safer play here, or you could try and utilize the opportunity to switch up the ball position. The issue again is the Incinerals here for Victor can go for that Fake Out, can enable the Raging Bolt to just get some damage off on the board, but that Tailwind has mm -hmm. finally come into play. Be so risky to try and go for it when you can still get some damage close combat. Okay, oh, it's had to aim some king cut. Super effective hit would be more than that's not even the roll this time around. A big piece of victory. Even last time, I was on a roll. Damn, to start taking a little bit more momentum going on forward. Dragon Pulse now. Let's the Iron that. Hand's already so low, and since this one doesn't have the assault vest. Well, yet again, we're trading both. But yes, this gives both our trainers the opportunity to bring in one of those Pokemon from the back. Considering the Tailwind is now up on the field, this could be a nice opportunity for Lorsi to bring in something like maybe the Ogre Pond in the back to be able to capitalize on this. Because as you mentioned before, the Choice Scarf on that Urshifu still does cause a few problems for the slower Pokemon on Lorsi's side, even in a Tailwind environment. And the thing is, you have to make sure the attackers that you have are doing the most in this situation. So the Heart Flame Ogre Pond coming out not surprised at this point. It is still difficult when staring down this Raging Bolt, the damage output that you can be doing at this point, but at least you do have ways to be hitting into that Urshifu with something like a wood hammer. And since this Urshifu is Choice Scarf, it doesn't have a detect. Exactly. This is where things always get interesting for me when it comes to terrestrialization, because What's if you put the Ogre Pond on the field, you want it to start really Lish. trying to pack a punch and go through a lot of these oh. teams. Urshifu uh, retreating here for Victor, line. wanting to keep it a little bit safer. Maybe when Trick Room, sorry, Schaden. when Tailwind is not on the field, and you can get that speed momentum once again. Tornadus just shutting down this Raging Bolt, does not want any combines, Ogre Ogre not here today, making sure it cannot go for any of those setup moves. As Ogre Pond just goes straight out for a wood hammer, catches the Landorus, does about two thirds of damage. There'll be a lot of damage yeah. done. Some recoil, though, and follow-up. That's why I stack for Victor. It. it won't be enough for the KO, but Victor knowing that, hey, there is a potential of a taunt, or maybe even just wanting to start dealing some damage into this Ogre Pond, just going on the offensive. It's mind does mean those. that, again, there is still no Protect going out. You don't Joshua. have to worry about a setup. But now, from Joshua, you have to look at... You could stop with a Dangerous King. I mean, it does have to be attacking time with the Tornadus. You've already set the Tailwind <laughs> and the Taunt. What else can you really do? That's the thing. Tornadus is sitting very pretty on the field, but it's not doing a lot of damage. I think living in fear I mean, of that opposing Thunderclap that can come through from Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt shut down I must have again. doesn't have a choice but to go It's like a win con. Yeah, it could be the Dragon Pulse to be safe or saying that, hey, what else can Lurcy really do? Go for it. Instead, oh! Come but the survival, not very effective hit. And that is Ivy going Kachu. to be a huge survival. Ivy Kachu will follow it up. Hitting into the Raging Bolt will bring... Oh, they hit it! And er hit it! Raging Bolt so low. Honestly, okay, Ushifu darf nicht, kann nicht auf Aquajet gehen. Aber er hat noch Thunderclap. Oh, das wird jetzt wild. And that is going to be such okay, a big survival going on into this. Rashifu is going to be coming out into the field. And again, choice scarf. You That's have to pick your move, and that is going to be the move you're stuck with yeah. for the rest of the match. Ogre Pond, you do have to be worried about the fact that there is still that priority potential coming out from that Raging Bolt. But that is something that could also be aid around. I love this play by Lorsi here. You can go for something like the follow me, draw in the potential thunderclap that too. threatens your tornadoes so heavily, allowing the tornadoes to go for that bleak wind storm. It looks like it might Ach so. be able to get the Nö, team von Joshua cooler. And at the same time, it's going to deal super effective damage to that opposing Urshifu. for you know it can't trust the Raging Bolt's already done that. that Eben war ich eigentlich für Alex. Damage, as long as it can connect. That's the aber biggest if Aquajet from Hype, the Urshifu. That gewesen. will be the connect here at that point to take that Ogre Pond down and now down to that Tornadus Thunderclap, since one Pokemon was already taken care of, well, this one's going to be fired off. The Tornadus will survive. Super effective hit in the Bleak Wind Storm. Well, it's missing, and it won't take care of that Raging Bolt. The Shifu surviving as well. Doesn't manage to sweep the Urshifu off the field either. It's still hanging on. I mean, what an interesting interaction with those priority moves as well. Even though there was the Follow Me, being able to KO it with the Aqua Jet enabled Raging Bolt to be able to still deal big damage, but it didn't get a knockout. The issue, however, is the Ursaluna. What can it really do against both of these Pokemon, particularly when the speed is not on its side? 
Well, the thing is, is we still have this yeah. opportunity okay, 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 okay. if we go for it, unless Victor wants to okay, be trying okay, to take okay. care of the Tornadoes on this turn. But this Ursa Luna does have full health, and it does have access to spread damage moves. <sighs> and sure, these two Pokemon have survived, but, uh, but they're not necessarily too healthy. And what was scaring down the Ursa Luna before, which was so scary, was the close combat. We don't have access to that anymore, and we still have the Terrestrialization. So you can get out of that Water-type weakness and fire Aqua off this attack. That's such a good point, actually. The Choice Scarf completely locking it into Haywind. that Aqua Jet. It's a huge amount of pressure on Victor to have gone into that move because it cannot switch it up for that close combat. Once again, uh, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna in this sein, end game going for his terrestrialization. The Hyper Voice will be devastating to both yeah, of these opposing Pokemon. Halt schneller. And that's what the Blood Moon Ursa Luna yeah, yeah. save for this Aqua Jet. It will be no speed, Jetzt but it will this Raging Bolt. Can Raging Bolt things kill? Flo 5-2, let's go. We're getting so intense. Call oh, Mainz. But calm mind instead. Ha, huh, okay. Some oh, sort of okay, ability, ich check. But with this, with this move, der will, both. also er hofft, dass er halt lebt. That's the thing, I think the calm mind is too little too Rein, late. Drei. The taunts from that Tornadus have really helped out okay, for this okay. end game. Okay. Joshua Lossi forcing into a game three here. And really showing with different oh, modes to the team the flexibility that it has. Ah, Rein, vier, vier, drei, set. Of course, auf, Victor drei. having access to those priority ja. moves was something you had to dance leid, around man. the entire time. A super dangerous tango, das ist nicht so but geil. finding really good ways around that. And it was a really nice play from Victor to have that Rotten aqua jet into the thunderclap. Ja, it's such a nice play, bulky. but the issue being you are now locked Egal, into Reim, the aqua jet that then loses you that end game when you are staring down a full health. Jetzt noch zwei Wins holen für Reim und dann. So now we have to see in this game three where these players are at. Because when you are in the European Championship mode won me the game. It wasn't a free match, though. And Victor now can play into that and has those kind of options. So I'd be really intrigued if he wants to kind of go back to try and catch Victor off wins. guard or just straight commit. For me, it was all about the Raging Bolt on Victor Medina's side. The fact that it was denied that Calm Mind, met that Thunderclap right at the end that finally was able to connect on the Tornadus wasn't enough to get the KO. I think with possibly a boost on it, it, it might have been able to, to try and do something. But Unfortunately, not being able to get that defensive capability up meant that the Hyper Voice towards the end was also able to easily secure the knockout. This was big damage as well. In game one, we saw the Incineroar just hang on, but then I think the follow-up here just enabled that one precious piece on Victor Medina's team to fall very early on. Yeah, it's kind of a bit difficult. Yeah, and whether, the, whether Lorsi knew that was supposed to be a roll or that he just got unlucky in that game one, or not ja, being mal, able to get schon. the KO is so huge. Big survival's coming out too. I mean that Ogre Pond being able to take that hit to fire off, start Aber dealing Flow with the Raging Bolt. Is crazy. When you look at how much was returned, maybe Dennis it doesn't seem okay, so significant at first. But it's the consistent damage that takes care of the Raging Die Bolt. Even that end endgame, once it was finally not taunted. Calm mind. Well, Benny, it's not going to help you on this case. You've Marcus already taken so much damage, and this Hyper Voice is more than enough to take care of things, especially in the Terrasalized form. And Tornadus was able to sit very pretty on the field. I think in Game 3, if Victor does see that, he might want to try and remove it from the field a game. little bit sooner. Stop it going for these Tailwinds, stop it going for these Taunts. Well, it's going to be big adjustment coming out from Lorsi. Reminiscent of that Game 1 here. Iron Hands for grab yet again. And Raging Bolt or Shifu over on Victor's end. This Jetzt kommt bald wieder der Karl Mainz hier. <lacht> oh ja, aber das... Uh, ist es Close Combat? Ist es nicht sogar eher Heavy Slam? Es ist ja noch immer Heavy Slam gewesen. Der hat jede Runde geterrert. Ist ja safe Heavy Slam gewesen. Man muss auch mal was trauen. Mich immer noch für Vereins, der Match war so far or Shifu not going Boah. for a super powerful hit das other than that U-turn. This will be a chance to pivot out and actually pretty significant damage into the Furgaraf, all things considered. Yeah, it's heavy nice to be able to get a good life. chunk onto the Furgaraf to leave it in a little bit more of a vulnerable spot going forward. And particularly with the Landorus coming in, this is a Pokemon that can apply great pressure to the Iron Hands with something like an Earth Power going forward. To no surprise, Finally, for this Raging Bolt, it's able to get that Calm Mind up when it wants to. Coming in heavy slam damage. How much damage does OBM do? I don't know. To make it a little bit more gemacht, going oder? forward. Of course, there was no fake out coming through. The close combat yeah, doing nothing also to that very terror. Or is it so fat? Played by Victor Medina. <laughs> And that's going to be a special defense and defense drop for that Iron Hands. Fett is so crazy. Not posting in the best positions, even with the trigger Damn, of the that so so is. in its favor. And it feels bad when you're taking all of that raging in return bolt. for a Raging Bolt that's taken 25% health. Yes, yeah, so and now Iron Hands in a dangerous spot. 480 yes, kilo. 
some decent damage here, but the issue is that Earth Power coming through from the Landorus is going to hurt thanks to the close combat drop it off. previously. Go. I wouldn't be surprised to maybe Please, see um, Joshua try and double down into that Landorus like we saw in game one, but if there is a Protect, it's going to be null and void. And it's whether Victor wants yeah, to go down that road again, knowing that Lorsi has that information yes, yes, or not. He will oh. not. So this double up into it. First off, the close combat. We got to see it didn't do too oh, much before, nicht ohne but fake the out, oder? Off, of course, being slower and that follow up there with that psychic into the Landorus. Yeah, oh, that's it's fake. Landorus, that fake out damage. Oh my the God. I I I I I. Crazy and now Dragon Pulse from the Raging Bolt will get rid of the draft. And I'm worried for the Cyan Hands if this is an Earth Power going into it. Well, it's at minus two special defense. I I I I I I. Joshua Lawsy down two Pokemon early doors in game three. You might have the Trick Room, you might have the Dimensions, but Victor fully in control to be kicking off that Twisted Room, getting the double KO. Ursaluna and Ogre Pawn, an opportunity to get something that could be putting on more pressure in that Trick Room, but it is an uphill mountain from here. This is the thing, Trick Room's up, so you've got to utilize it. Moin. Moin, hast du schon gesehen? Ja, wir sind Aber doch. Wir sind laut. Wie bitte? Hier ist ein bisschen laut. Naja, glaube ich, glaube ich. Wir sind doch mit allem up to date. Wie bitte? Wir sind doch mit allem up to date. Ja. Erzähl. Wie sind passiert? Erzähl, wie geht's dir? Wie war's? Was, was war los? Ich bin auf 4-2 gegangen. Ja. Hab mich, das Ding ist, ich habe mich, glaube ich, seit drei Games nicht gut gefühlt. Also wirklich so ja, komplett kaputt. Ein bisschen müde. gekippt, hast du, hast du getweetet. Ja, ein bisschen müde. Ja, also es war wirklich, ich war so, ich glaube, seit drei Runden könnte ich eigentlich mich hinlegen und schlafen, aber ich weiß nicht, wieso gerade so krass diese Müdigkeit kickt. Hast du genug getrunken, gegessen? Also auch so generell, ich habe frische Luft und alles, ich habe so auf alles geachtet, worauf man achten muss. Ja, ähm, ja und dann äh, alles gut, egal, ich gewinne trotzdem einfach, einfach machen. Ja. Da habe ich gegen Andrew Ding gespielt. Ja. Andrew Ding ist äh, einer der besten US-Spieler letztes Jahr gewesen, hatte äh, mit die meisten Championship-Points, ich glaube auch über 1000 oder so, und hat, ähm, ich glaube, das war der erste, der einen Swiss Round an, äh, also Swiss Run undefeated hatte, ja. das heißt 15-0 gegangen ja. und dann Top 8 sein erstes Game zu verlieren. Crazy. Also ist ein krasser Typ, so. Und Dennis hat den heute 2-0 weggemacht. Ja, yeah, das habe ich mitbekommen. Genau. Und das Problem ist halt... Oh, der kannte doch das Team. Er kannte das Team, oh. weil wir eins, zwei, das gleiche Team spielen. Nein, und stimmt. Erstens hat er halt insane krass oh. adaptiert. Und zweitens wusste ich natürlich auch so, okay, was, was, was hat Dennis gemacht und so weiter und so fort. Und das Ding ist halt, ich dachte zum Beispiel auch für ein Game 1, Turn 1, gut, wenn ich das genauso mache wie Dennis, dann ist er halt wieder in einer blöden Position. Er wird doch nicht genau das Gleiche machen. Ja. Aber er hat das gleiche gemacht. Also beziehungsweise nicht genau das gleiche, weil er ein bisschen anderen Lied hatte, aber es wäre auf das gleiche hinausgelaufen. So. Und ah, so er hat das Matchup halt schon gespielt. Das ist halt, das ist halt wirklich crazy. Genau. Ich meine, man, man kennt es ja, wie krass man adaptiert, wenn man halt Games spielt. Ja. Und wenn du zwei Games dagegen spielst, da hast du halt Richtig. schon wirklich einen krassen Vorteil. Und, und die Wahrscheinlichkeit bei fast 1000 Leuten zweimal gegen, also dass zwei Leute gegen dieselbe Person spielen, ist jetzt nicht super hoch. Ja. Aber es, also es ist, kann natürlich auch für mich ein Vorteil sein. Das Problem ist, ich würde aber an sich sagen, das Matchup ist negativ für uns. Also dass Dennis das geholt hat, war auch, glaube ich, der Überraschung des Teams geschuldet. Also Dennis hat gut gespielt, hundertprozentig. Mhm. Mhm. Äh, Andrew meinte auch so, ja, ich habe gegen das Team schon gespielt. Ich bin der Meinung, ich habe das schlecht gespielt. Und Damn. Also ja, kann er natürlich im Nachhinein sagen, aber das Ding ist, ich verstehe den Punkt, dass wenn er halt weiß, was er dagegen tut, gut spielen kann, Ja. was er dagegen tun muss, so wenn er die Infos hat, die er jetzt durch das Set hatte yeah, yeah, yeah. und die hat er halt und ich glaube, ich glaube, man kann es trotzdem gewinnen, also Game 2 habe ich dann trotzdem äh, Plays gezogen Wurde dann halt in einer kritischen Situation weggekrittet. Mhm. Hat er sich auch entschuldigt, aber bringt mir auch nichts. Und ja, dann, ja, äh, kannst du ja nichts von kaufen. Hab, <lacht> ja, ja, so. Habe ich dann halt verloren und dann ist man halt 0-2 gegangen. Mhm. Und das, also das war halt so eine Niederlage, die tut halt weh, mhm. weil ich hätte gerne das Game gehabt, oh, ohne dass er das Wissen hat und ohne dass ich das Wissen habe, so gesehen. Ja, so ja. einfach clean rein, weil ich glaube, das ist halt schon, wenn beide clean reingehen, 
winnable. Wenn beide Wissen haben, dann ist das äh, Matchup negativ. Ja, 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 ja. Boah. Weil das, also unser Team, äh, der, der, das ist ja auch krass, hat krass viele Überraschungen drin. Und das über... Flo, Flo also das zockt ist das, das Team was, noch, ne? Flo zockt das Team auch. Genau, ja. genau, genau. Weil Flo ist ja... Flo ist 5-2. Also ich, ich kann immer ja. Standings durchgeben. Michi ist leider auch 5-2. Oh, krass. Flo ist 5-2. Benny leider gerade 4-3 gegangen. Oh nein. Dennis und Kusha 4-3. Haben beide einen Win geholt. Nice. Äh, und Donji und Snomni sind leider beide 2-5. Ja, das ist halt. Aber immerhin, äh, Flo, Flo ist noch drin, Team, ja. Flo spielt halt das Team, äh, also genau das gleiche Team wie Snowms und Flobird und ich äh, und, und Dennis. Und das also halt ich, war, ich war halt derjenige, der als erstes Team spielen wollte und dann haben die sich ja auch ein bisschen auch drauf committed und jetzt sind wir da gemeinsam drin und ich finde es sehr, sehr cool. Ja. Und das feiere ich auch sehr. Aber ja, also ich bin, kann immer noch zwei Wins, da habe ich meinen Worlds und weit, aber ich, äh, also, dieses Ziel Day 2, das wollte ich halt unbedingt schaffen. Ich, ich habe es nicht geschafft. Schade, jetzt halt einfach zweimal noch gewinnen. Also, einfach ist besser gesagt, aber. Ja, das ist möglich. also, wäre wär schon cool, wenn du den. Halt. Warte, 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 hier hat Joshua das noch gewonnen. Nee, es läuft dann noch. Ich dachte schon. Äh, ja, wäre natürlich cool, wenn du trotzdem den Worlds and White hier äh, heute noch den, den Sack zumachst. Ja, Man muss auch natürlich dazu sagen, hier, ich habe dir mal die Statistiken geschickt. Bloß. Uh, opponent Winning Percentage ist wirklich unterirdisch. <lacht> das ist ja, wirklich insane. Aber, aber das ist ja egal. Ja, yeah, yeah, safe, 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 safe. Ja. Aber äh, ja, vielen, vielen Dank, wie gesagt, generell fürs Routen und alles so gut dran und es geht ja immer noch weiter. Ja, safe, Ey, wir routen immer noch alle für euch. Ne? Also äh, gerade für, ich meine, für Kusha geht es noch um Punkte, für dich geht es noch um Punkte. Äh, Dennis ja, und Benny wollen also, wahrscheinlich ich, auch noch die Punkte mitnehmen. Zwei, also, für Kusha und ich, wenn wir 6-3 gehen, haben dann beide, habt ihr unsere beide Worlds Worlds ja. Das ist ja geil, dann könntet ihr heute trotzdem, egal was ist, ihr könntet immer noch feiern. Genau, deswegen, das versuchen wir ja. und mal schauen, was geht. Und äh, supportet natürlich Michi und Flo noch gut. Ja, natürlich, das yeah, auf jeden okay. Fall. 